Hi, my name is Holly Grant and I'm the owner of Pilates PT. And we're gonna go through a 20 minute Pilates workout that's safe during your second trimester. And the focus is really gonna be on preparing your body for labor and also strengthening the pelvic floor. Now, I want you to start by finding yourself in a position that's most comfortable for you. So for some of you, that might be sitting on a pillow or on some yoga blocks. You might find you have to be slightly elevated off the floor. For others, you might even find you have to sit on a Pilates ball or a chair. Or if you're sat on the floor and you're relatively comfortable, you could have your legs extended out in front of you. You can have an open frog position, which is where we have the bottoms of the feet together and the knees out to the side. Or if like me, you're comfortable sat cross-legged, I want you to sit like that. And make sure it's a position that is comfortable for you. We're all gonna be different because you're gonna be here for a couple of minutes. Now, once you're comfortable, I want you just to start by popping your hands on top of your knees and relax the shoulders. I want your arms to feel nice and heavy and move them away from your ears. And then I want you to slowly close the eyes and keep those eyes closed and you won't need them for the next few exercises. Now I want you to start thinking about your breath. I want you to breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. So get that circular movement of the breath going. Nice big breath in through the nose and then breathing out through the mouth. Now keep that going and as you exhale, I want to just about be able to hear the breath. So it's quite a noisy exhale, and this really helps you to engage your abdominal muscles. So again, nice big inhale through the nose, and as you exhale, breathe out through the mouth, through pursed lips. I always imagine that I have a birthday cake in front of me and I'm gently blowing out the candles. Now again, keep the eyes closed while you're doing this. I just want you to start to focus on your rib cage. As you breathe in through the nose, feel as if your ribs are moving out to the sides of the room. Breathe into the sides of the ribs. And as you exhale, start to feel the rib cage closing slowly back in and down. You can imagine your rib cage is like an accordion. So as you breathe in, the ribs are being pulled gently out to the sides of the room. And as you exhale, you're gently closing them back in and down. Keep this breath going. Nice big inhale. And as you exhale, it's like you're cleaning out your lungs. You're trying to get rid of all of the breath. And one more big breath here. And on your exhale, you can slowly open the eyes and come back into the room. Now that's the kind of breath that we want to keep going, but don't get too stressed about if you lose it. And if you're doing any hypnobirthing or NCT or working with your midwife, you might even be taught a different breath. But in Pilates, it's in through the nose, out through the mouth. Now I want you to take a moment to think about your pelvic floor. I want you to visualize it like it's an open tissue. So there are four corners of a tissue. The four corners are the pubic bone, the back passage, and your two sit bones. Now visualize those four points of the tissue and imagine the tissue completely relaxed and completely flat on the floor. Now I want you to think about the crown of your head and you're just gonna rock your body forwards and backwards, side to side and keep wriggling around until you feel as if the crown of your head is sat directly above the middle of the tissue. So you should feel as if we could see through your skin into your spine that it sits directly above the very center of your pelvis. Hold it there. Now, I want you to keep that weight even, and I want you to visualize that you are taking the middle of that tissue and gently drawing it up into your belly. So as you pick up the tissue, the four corners come with, you draw it all the way up into your belly, and then you gently let the tissue go back down. Make sure it completely flattens onto the floor. And it's really important, especially as you get closer to your labor, that you're able to completely release the tissue. Do that once more for me. Gently pull up through the center of that tissue and then let the tissue gently release completely back down and relax. Now that's how I want you to visualize your pelvic floor. So during some of these exercises, I'm gonna want you to gently activate the pelvic floor. Use that analogy. So first of all, we're gonna lie down on our left hand side. Now just be careful as you come and lie down that you're using your hands for support because we don't want the abdominals to do too much of the work. Now we're going to start by resting on our left forearm. So my left elbow is bent and I'm going to prop myself up onto my arm here. No sinking into the shoulder, keep the shoulder nice and neutral. 
Now with my legs, I'm gonna have my knees bent and my feet stacked one on top of the other. And I'm gonna take a moment here to try to make sure that from my shoulder to my hip bone, I'm nice and diagonal. So try not to sink into this left arm. Use your core to stay nice and neutral. Right hand on your hip, keep the heels together. And as you exhale, we're gonna lift that right knee up towards the ceiling and then inhale, control the release back down. And same again, as I exhale, I lift the right knee up towards the ceiling and inhale slowly, control the release back down. Now if we really break down what's happening here, I'm taking my right leg and I'm rotating it in the hip socket. So I like to visualize that my leg is a pencil and my hip bone is a pencil sharpener. So it's rotation at the hip, which causes external rotation and activates here on the body, so the side of your bum. Now, if you're finding that this is a lot of effort for that shoulder and you just don't necessarily have the endurance there to keep neutral, you could lie on the floor with a pillow under your head instead. So that's always an option for you, especially when we swap to the other leg. Now we're gonna go for three more like this. As I lift my leg, I'm making sure that I'm not sinking my hips back. Keep them stacked. Two more. Now on the next one, I want you to lift that knee to the ceiling and then hold. Now imagine I've put a wedge of cheese in between your knees. Do not let the knees come back together. And you can either hold it here or to make this a little bit harder, extend that right leg from the knee and hold it here. I've still got that wedge of cheese here and right now my right glute is on fire. Three, two. Now bend the knee slowly, bring the heels back together and come out of it the way you went into it. Now give the bum a quick rub or punching it feels quite nice as well in a strange way. We're going to keep this glute working by slowly push yourself up onto hands and knees. So I'm coming to four point kneeling and I'm going to still work my right glute in just a moment. But at first I want us to focus on our neutral spine. So I have my wrists under my shoulders and so my knees under my hips. And the weight of your bump tends to pull us into extension of the spine. So we tend to arch our backs like so. But I want you to visualize that tissue from earlier on. I want you to gently contract the pelvic floor and then start to gently tuck the tailbone back underneath you so that the lower back becomes more neutral. In neutral, there's a little curve in the lower back, but it is not excessive like this. So again, we pull up gently through the pelvic floor. We start to gently engage the abdominals and draw the tailbone under and we find a neutral pelvis. Another way of thinking about this here is imagine your tummy, if we were to completely release the bump and let the bump hang down, it would be completely relaxed. But I want you to just gently visualize the belly button hugging the baby. So there's a little bit of a lift, nothing aggressive, and that will support your spine. Now from here, I want you to shift your weight just slightly to your left leg. Bend the right knee, and as you exhale, we're gonna slowly kick the right leg up towards the ceiling, and on the inhale, slowly lower the knee back to the ground. And then again, exhale, we gently lift the knee up to the ceiling, and inhale, we carefully release. Now, as I do this, I'm not dipping my lower back like so as I lift the knee. I'm still thinking about that gentle hugging of the baby using my tummy. And I'm lifting my knee by engaging my right glute. So this is the glute max, the fleshy glute at the back that we tend to sit on. Only let the knee go as high as you can keep your neutral pelvis. And if you've got tight hip flexors, this can be slightly harder. And we're gonna go for two more like this. And the last one, I want you to lift that knee, hold, and tiny pulses here, four, three, Two, last one, hold. Make sure your shoulders are away from the ears. Three, two, one, and relax the knee down. Now take those knees as wide as your mat for me and just gently rock your hips backwards and forwards. And because the knees are nice and wide, you should have just enough space to get your bump through. And just gently rock for three and two. And last one. Now before we go on to climb on the other side, I want you to flip over and sit down on your bum. Again, if you need to pad yourself up with blocks, that's completely fine. Or if you need to sit on a chair, that's also fine. Find a position that's comfortable for you. So I'm actually gonna do a long frog position here. My legs are out in front of me. But it needs to be a position 
That means that you can sit over your pelvis again. So again, think about the crown of your head, think about that tissue and get yourself right over the center. Now from here, we need to extend your arms out to shoulder height. Palms are facing the floor. From here, on your breath out, you're gonna exhale, turn to the right, bend the right elbow, and just rotate gently so you're looking towards the side of the room. Now from here, straighten that right arm out as if you're reaching towards the back of the room. You are then gonna bend the elbow and come back through to the center. So breathe in to prepare. As I exhale, I'm gonna turn to the left and I'm gonna bend my left elbow. On the inhale, I'm gonna straighten that arm out, reach for the back of the room. Exhale, bend the elbow, and inhale, come back through to the center. Exhale, bend the right elbow and turn gently to the right. Inhale, extend the arm, reach a little further. Exhale, bend it. Inhale, return to the middle. And let's keep this going. And we're using the bent elbow to almost initiate that rotation of the spine. It's not excessive rotation. So I don't want you to feel as if you're stretching so far that your obliques are stretching. It's just a gentle twist to help keep that upper spine, your thoracic spine, nice and mobile. Let's do one more each side. Lead with the elbow, extend the arm, bend the elbow, come back through, last one. Reach, rotating, come back through and relax the arms down. Now gently fold forwards as if you're trying to look down towards your bump. Flex over and let the back of the neck be nice and loose. You've just been working into the upper back to keep you nice and straight. So give it a bit of a rest and hold it here for three, two, and slowly roll all the way back up to seated. Now we need to do clam on the other side. So now we're gonna be lying on our right hand side. And now remember, you can stay on your forearm like I did earlier on. So you're challenging shoulder stability on this right side. But if that's too much, you can lie down and put your head on a pillow or you could use a rolled up jumper. So find the position that's most comfortable for you. Your knees are bent, your feet are in line with your tailbone and your hips are stacked. Try not to sink into your waist. Keep your body nice and neutral. From here, keep the heels together. We're gonna to exhale to lift the left knee to the ceiling and then inhale, slowly lower it all the way back down. And same again, exhale to lift that left knee and inhaling as you gently lower it back down. Just be mindful that we don't want the leg to just fall back down. Try to resist it. Try to use control. And that way you're working the muscle in both directions, contraction and release. Every now and again, just double check this right shoulder. Make sure you're not sinking into it. And keep a little bit of activity through the core, mainly that feeling of gently hugging baby with your belly button. Two more like this. Go back to that visualization of a leg, a pencil in a pencil sharpener. And on the next one, we're gonna lift the knee, we're gonna hold. Now imagine we've stuck a wedge of cheese between the knees, keep that gap. Slowly extend that left leg out if you can, hold and stay. Three, two, slowly bring it back in the way you went into it. Lower the knee back down and give your leg a quick rub. Now remember, use your hands to push yourself up. Try not to use your abdominals like you would in a crunch. We want to keep working that left glute. So we're gonna come back to that full point kneeling position. And again, the wrists are under the shoulders, the knees are underneath your hips. And we're gonna hold it here. Take a moment just to find that neutral pelvis again. So think about the tissue, gently pull up through the pelvic floor. Make sure that you feel as if your pelvis is really neutral, there's a slight curve in the lower back, and the hip bones and the pubic bone are all on the same line. And you've got that gentle hugging of your tummy using your abdominals. Now, we're gonna take the left knee, we're gonna bend it, we're gonna shift the weight slightly to the right, and as you exhale, we're gonna lift the left knee up into the air, then inhale, slowly lower the knee back down. And same again, exhale to lift. And inhale to lower. Now I'm not really changing the angle at my knee, so I really want the only lift to come from the left hip. So we're using the glute max, the fleshy glute at the back that we sit on. And although the weight is on the right knee, we're not leaning too much to the side. So really try and keep as level as you can. As we lift the knee, be careful that you're not dipping through the lower back. Keep it nice and neutral. 
And we're gonna go for three more. Check that your shoulders are away from the ears. They're not creeping up like earrings. Two more. And on the last one, I want you to lift that knee. We're gonna hold it here. Pulse it up and up. Gently activating your transverse abdominals, which gently hug your baby in. Three, two. Last one we hold. Three, two, one, and release it back down. Now again, take your knees as wide as your mat and just gently start rocking the hips backwards and forwards, trying to take some of the weight off of the hands. So we're not pressing down into them too heavily. Three more, two. Now last one, if it's comfortable enough, sit back, making sure your knees are wide enough to make space for your bum. And then slowly come down onto your forearms and just let the head hang down. So I've got loads of space for my baby, space for the bump to fall through. And positions like this, where we're kind of facing the floor or four point kneeling are really great as your, labor, as your pregnancy progresses, as they help the baby get into the perfect position for labor. Hold it here for three, two, and then carefully press yourself back up onto your hands and come back onto your bum. So swing the legs through. Again, use blocks if you need to. Legs in a position that's comfortable, so maybe an open frog or straight legs if you're really flexible. And I just want us to think about our shoulders. So when baby finally does come, there's gonna be a lot of leaning over and shoulders being pulled apart as we hold the baby to feed or change. So I want you to sit up nice and straight, reach the arms forwards, and then slowly take them up over the head as far as you can keep your rib cage in. So just make sure you're not popping your ribs. If you are, bring your hands forwards a little bit. Now from here, think about these shoulder blades. As you inhale, I want you to reach the shoulder blades up as high as they'll go, bringing your shoulders right up by your ears. And then as you exhale, draw the shoulder blades down as low as they'll go. Same again. Inhale, the shoulders reach up. My shoulder blades are right up by my ears. And then exhale, draw the shoulder blades back and down. Keep this going. So we're elevating the shoulder blades and we're depressing them. Two more like this. We reach up and then we drag them down using our lats and serratus muscle. We're gonna do one more. Exhale, release and then lower the arms back to the legs for a moment. Just give the shoulders a quick roll. For a lot of us, that's gonna be challenging enough and it might creep into the upper traps a little bit. This time I want you to reach your arms out in front of you. Bring your fingers together gently as if you're hugging a tree. Same thing, I want you to have a nice neutral spine. Maybe think about the crown of the head above the middle of the tissue. As you inhale, I want you to let the shoulder blades creep forwards as if you're pulling them apart. And then exhale, squeeze them together behind you. And then again, let them creep forwards as if the shoulder blade's separating. And then exhale, imagine drawing them backwards as if you're trying to hold a pencil between them. And we're gonna do three more like this. They stretch away from each other. This is the position you're gonna be in a lot when the baby arrives. So then we wanna drag them back and use the rhomboids that stop that from changing your posture too much, too left. Reach, reach, reach. Exhale, squeeze them back. Just watch they're not coming up too high. One more. Exhale, press them back. Find the midpoint, halfway between those two points. Relax the arms down and just gently flex forwards again. Just keep your spine and the muscles around it a quick break. Holding it here for three, two, and slowly roll back up. Now just find whatever position you started in when we were focusing on the breath at the beginning of this video. So the position that you find nice and comfortable, close the eyes, pop your hands back on your knees, we'll finish as we started. So close those eyes and find the stillness, relax the shoulders and start to come back to your Pilates breath. Breathing in through the nose and breathing out through pursed lips. Three more big breaths here. Every time you exhale, feel as if you're breathing out any tension that you might have in your neck and your shoulders and your face. And on the last one, big breath in. As you exhale, I want you to open the eyes, come back into the room, make sure you're nice and relaxed. Make sure you don't now rush off 
to go to work or to make the dinner, stop, make sure you have a nice drink, drink lots of water, take some time to just relax on your mat if you can and enjoy the rest of your day.